In 1949, shortly after World War II, the United States of America cut all ties from the People's Republic of China on the grounds that they would not associate themselves with communist countries. For decades, no Americans traveled to China and there was no communication whatsoever. In 1971, America feared the largely unknown communist giant. The communist China seeks to spread its own brand of global revolution. But that's when a long-haired American ping-pong player missed his team bus in Japan and befriended the world's number one Chinese player. The American team, while traveling through Asia, was invited by Premier Zhou Enlai to play against the Chinese team. That team was the first group of people in 20-odd years that had set foot in China. Mao's offer conveyed the regards of the Chinese people to the American people. The televised tour showed the new, friendly face of China to the world. I was so good that some years later, the army decided that I should be on the All-America Ping Pong team. We were the first Americans to visit the land of China in like a million years or something like that. Somebody said world peace was in our hands. But all I did was play ping pong. In February of the next year, President Nixon took his own trip into China to meet with Mao Zedong. The two countries settled on an agreement known as the Shanghai Communique, which reestablished the friendship between the nations. Because of this trip, Nixon's popularity soared, and in 1972, he won re-election by a landslide. For Republicans, their convention was a three-day celebration of the first term of President Nixon. Convinced of their strength, Republicans nominated Richard Nixon and Spiro Agnew for second term. However, months before re-election, Nixon and members of his cabinet were accused of burglarizing and wiretapping the Democratic National Party. After two years of trials, searches, and intense media coverage, Nixon was forced to resign. Whether or not their president's a crook, well, I'm not a crook. Regardless of the result of the American presidency, the effects of the dis diplomacy between two national powerhouses was still the most important thing. Perhaps the Chinese leader said it even better. In essence, they had let the little ball move the big ball. John Larson, NBC News, Los Angeles.